Wait, my hair. Okay, all right, we're recording. Time, Dr. Tanya G is back with us again. And this time, we're talking about another aspect of love, which is personal self-care. So today, we want her to share one of her major platforms, which is around using energies and notes in the form of oils to help us spiral up our energies and our good feelings and well-being um, and just do some something we can do for ourselves. So Dr. Tanya G, welcome back. And thank you for spending time with us to help us understand what we can do to make our experience a little bit better. Thank you, thank you Pamela Sparkle Sylvan. <laughs> you are a powerful, authentic, beautiful example of feminine beauty. Thank you for your strength and thank you for inviting me today. And I am so excited to share with you one of my greatest passions. So I would like to just start to share with you and tell you, I fell in love with essential oils several years ago. And I want to tell you a very quick little story about what happened. So just so you know, I've been an herbalist, a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine for over 20 years now. And can you believe it? I never used essential oils before a couple years ago. And I'd heard about it, but you know, I was ignorant. I just thought, oh, essential oils, they're pretty little smelly things. I didn't really give it much value. I was ignorant. I just didn't know. Well, I was on a flight heading towards Mexico for a one-week course on yoga and whatnot. And I was sitting beside this gentleman on the plane, and he was hacking. As soon as he got on the plane and sat down, he started blowing his nose. And then it was coughing. It was phlegmy, and he looked horrible, and it just didn't, it wouldn't stop. It's a five-hour flight. And the lady beside him on the other side, she had the big eyes like this. And he got up to go to the bathroom because he had the middle seat. And I, I turned to look at this lady, and I'm like, this is not good. <laughs> she said, this is day one of my vacation. She goes, I cannot get sick. And I go, I me neither. Well, the next day, I got sick. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this recycled air in the air in the in the airplane. I ended up get, catching this horrible cold. And you know, I'd never been, uh, ha never had an asthmatic like response, but this cold produced so much phlegm. I was very sick. Mm -hmm. And for me to fall that ill, it was you know. It was surprising to me. So anyways, I got to this course, and thank goodness a lot of my friends were there who were healers. I said, I need help. And so what they did was they created a little steam. They took a bowl of hot water, mm -hmm. and my friends brought out these essential oils. And they put one drop of oil of oregano, mm -hmm. and then they put two drops of a blend called Breathe. They tented me, mm -hmm. and I started to breathe in, all of this essential oil being steamed and misted up went straight into my sinus cavity, into my lungs through the breathing process. It opened up my sinus cavity. It opened up my bronchioles. And then I started to cough and I coughed up chunks of phlegm. Can you imagine? Wow. And I could breathe and, I, and my chest opened up and I did this. I did this five times in the first day and I got through the day. And then I went back to the hotel. I had nothing with me. And I, <laughs> I called them. I said, first thing in the morning, I want some of this stuff. So they supplied me through the whole week. And I, I, I got better, which is amazing. So when I got home, I started to investigate. Mm -hmm. And what I learned, Pamela, is that there is thousands of years history with essential oils. The Egyptians were one of the masters at essential oils. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, the Chinese also had history of using essential oil. So that, for me, was enough to say I need to study. Yeah. So I started to study again. Yeah. And so now, um, I will tell you, you know, what is an essential oil? What is it? And it's very simple. All the plants, the flowers, the leaves, the bark, the trees, they have an essential oil to it. It is their own immune system against environmental threats and insects. It's amazing. So for instance, you would take like an orange peel. You know when you open up that orange 
and you, there's a spray, and then you've got it all over your hands, and yeah. it smells amazing. Well, that oil, essential oil, would protect that orange from molds on the outside, from insects from burrowing into the fruits of the, of, of the orange. So the essential oil is their immune system and their protection. Well, it's made out of thousands of chemical compounds that are organic. Well, guess what? We are also organic. <laughs> yeah, I've learned that, yeah. <laughs> we do the same things. You know, inside of our bodies, we could break it down to elements, to the elements. If you want to get mystical, there's the water element and the fire element and the earth element to the air. And in Chinese medicine, we actually have the wood element and we also have the metal element. It's all within us. It's also in the plants. So essential oils are a compatible medicine. I like to use this word medicine for our bodies. It's not just a pretty little smelly thing, and it can be a pretty little smelly thing. Mm. Now, the thing is, the essential oils can be used many different ways. Aromatically, just by smelling it, when we breathe it in, it actually affects our limbic system in our brain. Okay. Now, the limbic system is linked to memory. So, you know, you know, you know, I hear a lot of people tell me that their grandmother would wear rose or their grandmother would wear lavender. You know, or they remember you either go to a spa, you put a little lavender eye pillow and that smell just envelopes us and we breathe it in and then there's an instant relaxation and comfort. Well, that's because the limbic system connected the memory of that smell. Uh, okay. so if you want quick fix healing on an emotional level, essential oils are very good for that. Okay. We our history is linked to smell. So some of the big things that people are always complaining about, like they're stressed out. Everybody's stressed out. I mean, there's all kinds of things that contribute to stress, but they use the word, I'm stressed. Or they yeah. can't sleep. Or they have an ache, maybe a backache or a neck ache or a headache. So they have aches and pains. Yes. And, and there might be things affecting their appetites. Yes. Or maybe even their sexual drive. So they, they have these big things that happen in their lives. And I'm wondering, can essential oils or the use of essential oils help with those things? Agreed. It, it can. You know, there's a, there's a funny line that says, there's an, there's an oil for that. There is literally an oil for anything. Oh, break that down. There is, a, there is a plant medicine for every ailment, whether it is psychological, emotional, spiritual, physical. You know, physical is biological. Mm -hmm. There is a medicine for that. And the oils are a perfect opportunity to, to be that delivery system for that medicine. Okay. Well, in, with an oil, so I'm going to share with you how I use it. An oil being applied to the area of the body where it hurts can deliver the medicine where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. Let's say you get sore throat. Believe it or not, one of the most popular essential oils for all types of bacterial or viral conditions is something called tea tree. Tea tree. Or, the, or the Latin term is melaleuca. Okay. So you can dilute it a little bit with some olive oil or fractionated coconut oil and just apply it to the area, to the throat. Okay. Like this. And you, you can use it topically for skin conditions. So it's things like this. You can use the oils mm -hmm. topically, mm -hmm. aromatically, and if it is pure grade essential oil, mm -hmm. you can use some, not all of them, <clears throat> orally. Mm. So there is an oil for everything. In traditional Chinese medicine, when we diagnose people, we're diagnosing the entire person and we're also diagnosing the energy systems. So the essential oils can actually be applied to meridians, acupuncture points, or the actual area where you have the condition, such as the stomach. Let's say we're talking about stomach ache. You can actually apply the essential oils right on the stomach itself or one drop in the mouth or aromatically, it will have an effect. You so where are the, what are the meridians, Tanya? Oh, the meridians. The meridians are energy roots in the body. 
and this is traditional Chinese medicine. And these roots, I mean, these meridians, roots are as in highway roots, not like in tree roots. We believe that there is 12 essential energy meridians in the body. They're the same on one side as, as they are in the other, and they're on the back and in the front. And they carry the vital force energy called chi. They carry the chi throughout the body. And as the chi moves in these meridians, it revitalizes, it repairs, it re-energizes, it keeps everything healthy. Okay. So, however, disease is when that chi, life force energy, becomes stuck in these meridians, or they're moving too fast, or they're moving too slow. So when people say they have a feeling that I feel like I'm always stuck or I can't get clarity, this is probably a sign that your chi is stuck somewhere in your body. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and, there's, and there's many, many, many ways that we can deal with that. <clears throat> in Chinese medicine, again, we look at the person as a whole individual. So if you were to ask me right now, if let's just say you're feeling stuck. Let's just say you're, let's see, well, I'd ask you why you're feeling stuck. Let's just say you're frustrated, right? Okay. I'm frustrated. I'd, say, I'd, be, I'd say, excellent. I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer you two solutions. And th this is where, I'm, this is where uh, is some intuition comes in as well as some clinical scientific evidence. The first thing I would choose is peppermint. Why? Because peppermint in traditional Chinese medicine has a cooling effect. And if you're frustrated, you're going to, your energy is going to get stuck. There's always going to be a little heat somewhere. And heat can flare up and cause you to feel a little bit like this. So we need to calm and cool. Calm and cool. But when you smell peppermint, it has this effect. It's like clearing effect. A clearing effect that goes right through the head. And then what I would do, I was I use lavender because lavender has a relaxing, calming effect. Remember that grandmother comment? Oh, soothing and comfortable. I'd be massaging that in your feet. Well, just a massage of the foot's going to help, but yeah. throw a little bit of lavender in there. We like to apply some of the essential oils on the bottoms of the feet because that's one of the places where it's very safe to do so. Okay. We, we skin is very, very... Um, sensitive and delicate applying oils on the bottom feet is one of the safest places to go boom energy comes down you're enveloped in the smell of peppermint and lavender boom you're calming right down the peppermint moves creates clarity and moves the chi and then the lavender relaxes and puts you in a nice balanced state again and balances the key nice so, you know, that's, that's a way of using the essential oils. We're using it on an emotional level, but also on an energetic level. But, you know, I have to tell you, not all essential oils are the same. Uh, I was going to ask you about that, about the notes and the frequencies of the different oils, because when you go into a health food store or a drug store, there's just so many choices, and how do you choose which one is the best quality to use? Well, that's, that is, a, that is a, a good question. And there is a concern because the industry for essential oils is unregulated. So they can pretty much tell you that there, it, it, they could say it's organic and, and pure, but is it really? We don't know. Okay. So for me, I did my research. I'm choosing a company that is triple checked for purity, triple checked independently. And I'm not saying that you have to use what I use, but you have to be very careful. Very, very difficult. Do your research. So we're looking for pure, certified, tested, pure grade oils. Those are the ones you want to work with. Why? Because then I trust that you can use this orally. They, there's clinical scientific proof now that, and if, there's a whole bunch coming out in January that's going to be published about the efficacy of using these pure oils orally because the old information we have is it's not so safe mm -hmm. well yes it's not so safe because we don't know what's in oils yeah. but now with technology mm -hmm. there's a purification process and a testing of that purity okay. so you can have just more trust okay 
The other thing I want to share that might really convince some people who are really scientific based is that in Utah, they have done some recent tests and it will be published using essential oils against the superbugs. We're talking the life threatening bacterias that are not responding to antibiotic uses. So in the hospitals, it's a real problem. You go in for surgery, you heal, but then you find out you've got a superbug and now you're in life-threatening situation. Yeah. So yes, some combinations of essential oils have been used and it's been with great results and it will be published and as of January and it'll go out. And then we'll, for those who are really scientifically based, who need that proof that we have proof for you. But for those who are more intuitive, those who are really looking for uh, personal use and know it, then it is here for you. So I want to share with you my three top oils that I think have, I think every household should have them if you want to start off. Okay. Well, four, but I'm going to share. I don't know how much time we have. Okay. So the very first one is peppermint oil. Peppermint oil, in my opinion, is number one use for when you mentioned headaches. Okay. Don't go for the Tylenol. Don't go for the Advil. First thing I want you to do is drink a whole bunch of water, and then I want you to put the peppermint oil all over. Temples, back of the head, top of the head, third eye area here. Keep your eyes closed because the aromatics of the peppermint can make your eyes feel like they're uh, feeling icy. So you want to keep your eyes closed and just relax. Okay. Allow it to sink in. Excellent for migraine, frequent migraine sufferers, great for premenstrual headaches, great for those people who are on their computer far too long and they shouldn't be. <laughs> but you want to use that. So peppermint oil. Peppermint oil is also used for uh, acute digestive upset one drop orally in some water, or you could apply it to your belly. I would probably mix it with a little bit of coconut oil, fractionated coconut oil, put it on your belly. Okay. And so that has this fantastic effect. The other one is lavender. Everyone loves lavender. Did you know, Pamela, that lavender is antibacterial? So how would you use that then? In what instance would you use it? If you have a cut on your hand or a bee sting, or a strange rash, the first thing you can do is put lavender on it. Lavender is one of the oils that you can use neat, which means it does not require dilution. It is safe and it's antibacterial. It soothes and helps to repair skin. So <clears throat> lavender is fantastic. You can mix it with tea tree oil and put it into a, a, a bottle and spray it on your yoga mat. It's antibacterial. Okay. For people who have children who are ill, you can actually put lavender in a diffuser at night and it does two things. It helps the children to calm, but it also helps to purify the air. It has multiple uses. I'm giving you a, a Coles Note version. The, the third one is the one I mentioned already is tea tree oil. The Latin is melaleuca. Yeah. Melaleuca or tea tree oil, I get any, it's antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial. Any, again, any weird rash, any cut, any redness on anything, pimple, you can use tea tree oil. You can also put a, a few drops in your shampoo if you have dandruff. Mm -hmm. You can use it topically to spray onto a countertop, which is antibacterial. It will kill all the germs. And it smells really amazing. Yeah. So again, it can be used orally too. One drop into some water. If it is pure grade essential oils, always research your oils. Those three are my favorite. You can throw so in that, that's the peppermint, the lavender, and the tea tree. Okay. Yes. I think every household should have those. You can also add another one in there. Lemon. Lemon or wild orange. Wild when orange. I was, when I was pregnant, I couldn't take the lemon at all. Oh, oh, really? oh I couldn't take it. I'm getting better now. <laughs> I'm getting better. Couldn't take it. 
I oscillate between lemon and uh, great and and wild orange. You know what they remind me of? They remind me of um, uh, lifesavers. Uh, when I was a kid, every Christmas we would get those box of Christmas lifesavers. Yeah. And I would just love eating all those yeah. <clears throat> fruit flavored ones. But lemon and wild orange, they have antibacterial properties as well. I would mix lemon in with a little bit of vinegar and you can spray down all your counters. You can get rid of all of your cleaning products and you can replace it with baking soda, vinegar, and lemon or wild orange essential oil. That's how you can detox your, your, your environment from toxic pollutants or toxic chemicals. Mm. Every household should have some lemon or wild orange as well. Okay, which brand are you using? I mean, I'm, sh you're, I'm sure you're using something good, so what is it you're using? Well, you know, I've done my research, and I chose this company because of its purity. The company is called doTERRA. I'm going to show you a label. Okay, I've not heard of doTERRA. Okay. Do doTERRA, the word doTERRA is gifts from the earth. And this company is extraordinary. Why? Because they are triple tested for purity. But the other thing that's unique about this company is they do is called co-impact sourcing, which means they're only interested in dealing with suppliers who are eco-friendly and are here to preserve the earth, not rape the earth. So they're working with small individual suppliers who are here to support earth, fair trade. For instance, they, doTERRA brought in or found a Nepalese wintergreen. It smells incredible. And they put a shout out to Nepal and said, we're looking to harvest this. We would like to work with a small, small business, small, pe small companies. And they found a company that was willing to help. And they hired, they, they put it out that who wants to work? Women came forward. So it's Nepalese women that came forward and said, we will, we will work. And so doTERRA said, okay, tell us when you want to work during the time. You choose your hours. And they were like, really? So they chose very early in the morning. I think it's like 7 a.m. till noon or something. There's a very small amount, and that was it. And they said, yes, that we'll work with that. doTERRA put distillation plants right there. So the, the, they pick the leaves. It goes in the distillation which is a big steamer. Yeah. That's what they do. And they collect the oil right there and it gets shipped out. So all of the money goes right where they need it the most, right in Nepal. It does, things don't get out, take it, it's right there. So right. fair trade, eco-friendly, long-term commitment with these small businesses. Okay. And there you go. It's a, it's a company with the heart and so therefore, that was enough for me. I mean, I could, I could go on and tell you more about that. But essential oils are portable. They are effective and they are affordable. Portable, effective, and <clears throat> affordable medicines that every family, every person can have <clears throat> that work very well. So try to, I always say, try something natural first and see how that works. And go natural, so go natural first. So to bring that off to support, the yeah, go natural first. Why so Tanya, not? If people have questions about oils and they want to know how to use them, when to use them, can they follow up with you? Oh, please. It's what I love to do. You know, thank you. I, I welcome any questions because, because here's, here's, my, here's my thing, here's my gig, is eventually... I'll be pulling out a private practice to teach more. And why do I want to teach? I want to teach because if I share my knowledge with you, then you become more empowered with your knowledge to heal yourself, to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And as you take deeper care of yourself, you're more vital. And as you're more vital, you have a greater capacity to love. Yeah. So that's my gig, Pamela. So yes, I'm completely open. Okay. I'm here to ask any questions. I want to ask any questions. I'd be more than happy to, to 
to, to answer them. It would be my delight. Okay. So for the um, newsletter members that are watching this, just watch below um, the video, the link to the video, and you'll see Dr. Tanya G's um, link, and you can contact her to find out more about how to get your own pulse one or your own little sort of cabinet full, the golden cabinet, you call it? <laughs> oh, the, the golden cabinet. The golden cabinet, yes, that's what it is. The golden well, cabinet the golden of cabinet. medicines that you can reach for in a moment's notice. Thank you for sharing that. And as always, thank you for sharing your wisdom. And, you know, there'll be many more little things, little things that we can do to help heal ourselves and make ourselves feel better. Sometimes it's going to be around medicines and oils. Sometimes it's going to be around food, the things that we put in our body, and how to sort of make different decisions, more plant-based plant type of eating. As opposed exactly. to the other stuff. I need to do that myself. I've noticed for the last little while I haven't been doing my greens. So back to greens. Oh, I love my greens. <laughs> <laughs> so Tanya, thank you. thank you. Thank you. And we'll be in touch again. Thank you for everything. Namaste. Namaste.